friends, welcome to Origin, Fertility and IVF. I am Dr. Rashmi Sharma. Today we will discuss adenomyosis. This is a problem which really troubles the patient. But before that, if you wish to come to our center, you can see the number on the screen below. You can give a phone call and come to our, any of our centers. We have got five centers in Delhi. If you wish to consult us online, there is a link below in the description box. You can consult us online. Now coming to the topic of the video today, which is adenomyosis. What is adenomyosis? That's the first question. For that, you have to understand how uterus functions. So uterus has got three layers. One is the inner layer, which is the endometrium. Outside that is the muscle layer, which is the myometrium. And outside that is the outermost layer, which is the serosa. So whenever uh, in a menstrual cycle, an egg is forming, simultaneously the uterus is also getting ready to accept the baby if a pregnancy happens right so that's that means the endometrium is getting ready for the pregnancy if a pregnancy happens well and good if a pregnancy does not happen that inner lining of the uterus or the endometrium sheds off that is menstruation that's how menstrual bleeding happens okay so this is normal physiological menstrual cycle in some of the women, the layer of the endometrium or the inner lining, those layers may be present outside also. So when that layer, the tissue is present in the muscle layer of the uterus, that is known as adenomyosis. Okay. So what happens whenever the inner lining of the uterus is getting ready, those tissues also in the muscle are getting ready. Or whenever the uterus is bleeding, those tissues in the muscle are also bleeding. Okay. So for the normal menstrual flow, there is a way to come out. But when it is in the muscle layer of the uterus, there is no way to come out for the blood. So what will happen? That blood will keep on getting collected every month. Okay, That is what is adenomyosis. And blood is, you know, if it is getting collected, it's not a very um, healthy thing. Okay, so that will lead to a lot of tissue reaction, a lot of inflammation in the muscle wall of the uterus. And in fact, the muscle wall of the uterus, they will start becoming heavy and bulky. Okay, the uterus become enlarged and globular in shape. So this is adenomyosis. How it happens, why it happens, the science doesn't know the answer. We really don't know why in some women, the inner lining of the uterus decides to reside in the muscle layer of the uterus. Okay, but what we know is that it is because of the periods. Okay? Because there is a period, there is bleeding, that's why adenomyosis symptoms can happen. So that means it is a disease of the reproductive life. In menopause, it will not trouble us because there is no period. Okay, so that, that's how adenomyosis affects the reproductive life of the woman. What are the symptoms that a woman can have if she has adenomyosis? The symptoms can be, they may be very heavy menstrual bleeding. Pain is really a very important part of the adenomyosis symptoms and patients mostly come to us with severe pain. Sometimes the pain is only during the uh, period time but as, as the disease progresses, the pain can be throughout month and it can really cripple a woman's life. It's a crippling pain. So much so I remember so many uh, unmarried girls being brought by their parents uh, that you know doctor please remove her uterus because they were so sick of the pain of the girl suffering from adenomyosis so it can be very crippling so there may be heavy bleeding there may be pain and there may be infertility or childlessness so since we are uh, infertility specialists we see a lot of women with adenomyosis and there is bulky uterus so uterus becomes heavy so there may be a sensation of heaviness in the lower abdomen and that heavy uterus or bulky uterus might be pressing on the bladder and the rectum sometimes so there may be urinary problems there may be you know frequency of urination there may be pain during urination and there may be problems in the bowel uh, so there may be some difficulty in uh, clearing cleaning their bowels okay, so these are the symptoms how do you diagnose when we suspect so ultrasound and mri these are the two investigation which give us a clear picture in ultrasound, you will see irregular walls of the uterus. There may be blood lakes that we can see. They're very characteristic signs and symptoms. And I think we can, uh, an expert or ultrasonologist can say whether there is adenomyosis or not. And MRI is even more, uh, you know, uh, specific about adenomyosis. Sometimes when we, when we are in doubt, we uh, tell the patient to get an MRI done. Okay, so now let's say you have been diagnosed with adenomyosis. Now we are sure that you have adenomyosis, how to treat it. 
since we know that this disease is due to periods, the treatment would be to stop the periods. Because we don't know the cause of adenomyosis, so of course we are not able to treat the root cause of adenomyosis, but we can stop the periods so that the uh, disease severity can go away. Okay, so the treatment will also depend that what are your periodic desires? Are, is your family complete or not? Do you want a pregnancy or not? So if somebody wants a pregnancy, the first priority should be to make that woman pregnant as fast as, fast as possible. And these women so many times will need IVF for treatment because IVF is the fastest way or is, you know, is very successful treatment. So many of the adenomyosis women will end up in IVF. And once you become pregnant, of course, your periods have stopped for nine months. And after that, when you are feeding the baby, your periods have stopped for one year. So almost for one to 1.5 years, uh, there is a sabbatical. You are pain free because you are not having any periods. And after that, you can be put on certain drugs to take care of your disease. So this is the treatment for somebody who is wanting to become pregnant. But somebody who has completed her family, how do we uh, treat the symptoms of adenomyosis? It could be by medicines or it could be by surgery. So with the medicine, there are wonderful medicines available now, like Dynogest, uh, like Mirana, which is a device which is put in the uterus, which releases progesterone, kind of suppresses the endometrium uh, organ, suppresses the uh, activity of the adenomyosis. There may be injection, which are like monthly injections of GnRH analog depot injections, which kind of create menopause-like situations in the body. And of course, painkillers. NSAIDs is a very important uh, treatment uh, in our armamentarium. So with the help of these drugs, your periods can be stopped or your periods can be under control. Uh, and for some time, at least, uh, you can continue on these drugs. But if there is a patient in whom the symptoms are not getting controlled with the drugs or, you know, uh, it's like too much time for the patient, then sometimes uterus removal is done to save patient from the agony of pain. Sometimes even the adenomyoma is resected surgically. When we want to save the uterus, then there is a kind of defined mass that we can see. We try to remove that mass only. Though I would say that surgery of adenomyosis is a little difficult because it's really difficult to find a plane in the uterus, but sometimes it is done. Okay, so let's say you have successfully overcome your disease and now you're pregnant. Are there any complications in pregnancy? Yes, these pregnancies are high risk pregnancies with adenomyosis. There are more risk, more risk for preterm labor, premature labor. There is more risk for intrauterine growth retardation. And so of course these are high risk pregnancy. You have to be under care of a good obstetrician in a good setup who can deal with high risk pregnancies. I hope uh, this information will be useful for you. If you know any person who is suffering from adenomyosis, maybe you can share this video link with them so that uh, they know about the disease and they know how to treat it. Thank you so much.